14.5 inch GPR. Let's talk about it. There's one concept I want you to be aware of when I talk about this build and it's that this was built for a team setting. Within a team setting, you should be aware of the parts you're using and whether those are interchangeable or not with those around you. So I chose a standard mil spec setup because I knew that everyone else on the team was running a mil spec carrier, mil spec barrel, upper, all that kind of stuff, lower, it was all going to be mil spec. So I didn't choose something like a SIG MCX, SCAR, not, all that stuff was just off the table because I knew that everyone else was running this and I wanted it to be interchangeable for spare parts, all that kind of stuff. Now that's not to say that there isn't a point of SCARs, MCX, precision systems. It's not to say there's not a point of having those on teams but it's uh, dictated by your mission and by a lot of other factors. So I just knew this was, wanted to be, this was gonna be in a team setting and I wanted it to be interchangeable. So without further ado, let's get into the actual build. Starting on the front here, Surefire three prong flash hider. It, it interfaces with the RC2 and I run the RC2 a lot on this build. I don't really know the difference between the four prong and the three prong. And you're gonna notice that with a lot of the parts on this build is that there are substitutes that may be equal in value, equal in performance, and it's going to come down to your personal preference. For instance, if you are a cloud defense fan or a mod light fan, get that over the Surefire. I don't really care. I'm a Surefire fan. I got a good deal on this one. That's why I'm running it. But a lot of them have similar performance and it just comes down to what do you want to run? Same thing with the stock. Just comes down to what's your preference in a lot of these cases where performance doesn't really change between them. So moving back here to this stack here, we have a Surefire Turbo. GL4 Pro IRH and a front sight post. The front sight post shouldn't be here, we'll talk about that later, but the Surefire Turbo and the GL4 Pro. So on this build, I needed to have night vision capabilities. I also wanted to have a green laser and because it's a GPR build, I wanted to be able to punch out further with this flashlight. So I have the Surefire Turbo, it's a pretty bright light, it's able to reach those distances and I have the GL4 Pro IRH. The reason I went with the IR only version instead of the standard version is because the IR only removes this white light and by doing that is able to increase the throw and the beam tightness of that IR illuminator. Those upgrades were significant enough for me to go with the IRH version because I already knew that I was going to be running the Surefire Turbo here. The white light on the standard version and the XL version of the GL4 Pro isn't bad. It's pretty good actually in a CQB setting. So if you want to run it as a standalone unit, you can, and I did for a while, but when I dedicated this to a GPR setup, I knew that I really wanted to punch out further at distance, and that's why I have the turbo here. And I swapped out my standard with the IRH because I own defense distributors and I can do stuff like that. But this is exactly what I wanted, and this is why we specifically manufactured this product so that we could have a version that makes this setup right here possible. And after running this setup right here, it's perfect, it's exactly what I want, and it meets all of those specifications that I think are important for GPR. The front sight post here, I just saw someone else put it behind the GL4 Pro, and I didn't believe that you could do it, so uh, I did, and it fits perfectly. Look at that, I should also get some close-ups on the laser setup, so pretty simple, that's the front of the build. Moving back to the upper itself, this is a 14.5 inch BCM upper, the barrel is 14.5, obviously the handguard's below that. Everything's pretty standard, why did I go with this option? Well, I got on a blem sale, that helped out, so it was a little bit cheaper, 14.5, I don't know, that's a good barrel length, 16 is good too, 10.3 is good too, I don't really care. The fact of the matter is, whether it's a 10.3 or a 20 inch, at the average engagement distance, it's still going to hurt. So, I just like the 14.5, I really didn't put a whole lot of thought into it. My next build that I'm going to be doing for specific CQB stuff, it's going to be a 10.3, also not putting a lot of thought into that, it's still going to hurt. Uh, the handguard, it's a very slim handguard, and that's one of the reasons why I went with BCM over a lot of these other options. You could do a quad rail, you could do any of these larger rails out there. The reason I went with BCM is because the rails are really slim, and I like that more. I like having a slimmer rail, I think it feels better, it's a lot lighter. In my opinion, I just like it more, and I don't need a quad rail because I'm not running all that stuff on the sides. So, that's just me. Again, do what feels right to you in that case. Just make sure you're getting a barrel that's reliable and an upper receiver here that's reliable. And as long as you got those two things taken care of, you should be totally fine. It's really not that big of a deal. Don't overthink it. Moving back, actually, let's touch on this first. This is a SIG QD. It's really low profile. I'm not going to talk about it a lot because I want to gatekeep it, but I bought mine from Bauer Precision and uh, they're pretty cool. That's all I'm going to say. I've been using it for a while and yeah, it works. So the optic package right up here. This is an EOTech XPS2. I normally run an EXPS3, but that's getting some stuff done to it for another product release. So I'm running the XPS2 for now, which is perfectly fine for my needs. I have a Covert Arms 
EOTech EX or HWS ARD on the front of it. Totally forgot the name for a sec. And the reason I have that on there is not because I need a kill flash, it's because I need a SIM guard. I use SIMs a lot with this setup, and in order to prevent that grass, ah, glass <laughs> from being cracked, I have that ARD on the front of it, and it really helps. It saved it from SIM rounds. So if you want to protect your optic, an ARD like this is an option for you, and it also serves as a kill flash. So double whammy, two in one, and it fits awesome. Link to this will be in the bio. This is on a Unity riser so that it can interface with this flip to center. I like the flip to centers. That's not to say I'm against flip to side magnifiers. I just had one of these on hand and I like it. I think it's cool. I wanted to play around with it. So that's why I have this set up specifically. Uh, charging handle, Geisley. I don't know. I like the feel of it. I like that it's ambidextrous. It's a good charging handle. Really not much I can say on that front. Moving down to the lower. I, I don't even know what lower it is. It's pretty basic. What I would highlight on here is the serial covers. Also, the link to the bio, will, uh, the link will be in the bio for those. Ah, for those. These are cool because I don't have to cover up these serial covers now in post-processing. They're already covered, so uh, you can't see those serial numbers. Yeah, get smoked, ATF. Um, there's a Magpul bad lever right here. Some people have issues with these, some people don't. I've never had an issue with it, so I run it, and I like it a lot. It is way, way easier to be able to release the bolt with my finger right here. That's my personal opinion. If you don't believe that, then don't get it. It's pretty simple. I know people can get really heated over whether you should run one of these or not. I really don't care. Run what works for you. HRF Magwell right here. I don't know. It's a Magwell. I, I like running an enhanced Magwell on my builds that I need to, uh, where I might be running under nods. It makes it a lot easier to do reloads when I don't have that really tiny port and I have a little bit of a ramp there. So I enjoy having that on there. Is it pricey? Yeah, sure, but it gets the job done. And uh, that's what I care about with that. Trigger, it's some Geisley bow or SS or I, I don't know what it is. I bought it because someone recommended it and it's a really good trigger. It's a light trigger, it's like 2.5 pounds or something. And it's great, I like it, it's a good trigger. Are there cheaper options out there that probably have similar performance? Yeah, I just got a good deal on it, so. Uh, Again, choose what works for you. If you can shoot with it, that's what matters. The safety is a mil spec safety, and I do want to talk about this for a sec. I do not like 45 degree safeties. Safeties for the AR platform were, desi were designed like this for a very specific way. The size of them was designed like this, the way they rotate was designed like this in order to prevent fewer uh, ND situations. 45s are really easy to trip into the on position and you won't even know it's on because it's got so little motion between here. I know the 90 degrees might seem like a lot, but for me, it's worth it. They were designed this way for a reason. This could be an ambi, uh, maybe I'll switch it out, but that's why I, ran, I run a mil spec safety on every single build. I don't wanna deal with the 45s. I've seen some bad stuff happen with them. Again, my personal opinion on that, but I think that's backed a little bit more by user experience. BCM grip. I like these grips a lot. I used to run a lot of Magpul grips, and uh, honestly, the more and more I use the BCM grip, I like it more. It feels better, it fits my hand better. Again, on that front, grips is really up to user preference. Get what works for you. It's really not that hard. Don't put too much thought into it. Bolt carrier, BCM, it's really dirty right now. I don't know, it came with the upper. I didn't put much, too much thought into that either. Springs, buffers. Came with the lower pack, pretty simple. There is a law folder on this build. The law folder is cool because it lets me fit this entire build into a Pelican 1650, even with a 14.5 inch barrel. So I really like that because I usually transport my stuff to and from the range in a 1650. Being able to fold this and put it into the case, I can get all of my kit into one hard case, and that's cool for me. Law folder is pretty cool. There is a QD end plate right there for a sling that is also available at defensedistributors.com, link in the bio. And it just allows me to put a QD point on the back end here of that law folder, which is where I prefer to have my QD point. I like to have one here closer to the receiver and one here on the back of the end plate. Sling setup, this is what I like the most. Everyone's got their opinion on it. You just need to try it out. I would highly recommend though you try this configuration. It works best for me and I think you should try it too. Lightweight buffer tube, also from Defense Distributors. This isn't a necessity, but it is an eight position over the standard six, which is nice to have. And it is a fraction, I think it's like 25 to 20% lighter than the mil spec buffer tube. So it's just nice to have. The stock is a Magpul CTR. 
doesn't really matter that much. There is a reason I went with this over the standard Magpul stocks, the, I think the SLs, and it's because this one I feel like wobbles a lot less. Now it still wobbles, uh, it definitely still wobbles. Magpul hasn't quite figured out how to fix the wobble on their stocks yet. A little concerning, but it is what it is and it doesn't wobble too much. And this little lockdown tab here, I like that a lot. So that's the build. It has everything on my 14.5 inch GPR. I've thought a lot about what I'm putting on here and I'm still making changes. So let me know in the comments what you think I should change on a build like this, if there's anything I should add or take away. There are some changes I will be making to it. I'm probably gonna swap out the stock to something smaller like a Magpul, um, one of those smaller, I guess it's not the SL. Um, a different stock just to try it out. Uh, this is a good stock, but I want to play around with some others just to see how they feel. I'm going to be swapping out this for the EXPS3. I'm going to be taking off this front sight post. But other than that, that's pretty much what's changing on this build. Let me know if there's anything else you think that I should change. Let me know how you've got your build set up and all the stuff that I discussed that I sell at defensedistributors.com. The link to that is going to be in the bio. Be sure to check it out. We only carry stuff that I think there's actually a use to and stuff that I actually use. And yeah, we actually test the stuff that we make. I'm actually out in the field using this, getting this dirty. And I need to go clean this build off because there's a lot of dirt and grease on here and I have not cleaned it yet. So anyways, I'll see you guys later. Let me know in the comments what I should change. See you later.